So this is this is one of the the the, the big questions, possibly the, the 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 biggest question that we are having to face at the moment in terms of uh, trusting the the Bible. The arguments tend it to be for the New Testament rather than the Old Testament, uh, and it tends to be based on on this idea of of canon. Uh, there are two real uh, issues or two real attacks, as it were. They're based on this one question, which is, which books should be in the Bible? We've got 66 books in the Bible. We've got a few more if you're a Roman Catholic. Uh, and the the question is, which should be in the Bible, which shouldn't? And how do you decide? And it, it's the sort of question that's been really brought in, into uh, prominence, um, when I say recently, the discovery is happening in 1945, but it's tended to get to build up more recently into a, a really strong uh, attack on the New Testament. And what decided it, what, what really pushed it into prominence was uh, the discovery of a, a set of um, papyrus books at Nag Hammadi in 1945. That's one of them. That's the, the Gospel of Thomas. Uh, and... Uh, it's the one that's picked up by the Da Vinci Code. And the idea is that there were lots and lots and lots of books in the Bible, all of them different, with different teachings, different ideas of Jesus. And only a small number of them uh, were selected by the church. Those were wiped out and lost. Uh, so what we have is, is just a selection of, of books from a much later time. And uh, the atheist says, well, yeah, there you go. You've got all these books. They're quite different. Why do you think, why should you think your books are any better than the apocryphal ones, which give a totally different picture of Jesus? If the apocryphal ones are wrong, then the New Testament ones are probably wrong as well. And you've got the Roman Catholic version of it, which says, well, the, there were lots and lots of books, but the church only selected some of them. That shows that the church has the authority to decide about the Bible, and it picked it on what the Bible taught or what the, those particular books did. So the Catholic Church's teaching decides what's in the Bible. So you can't use the Bible to uh, supersede the church. The church has more authority. So th those are the, 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 the two issues that come out of this uh, idea of the canon. So we... We have our, our 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 picture of of the New Testament, twenty seven books which we would would consider to be scripture, but there are other books as well, which we wouldn't consider to be scripture, but they're books about Jesus and they're uh, fairly old. Uh, and the the questions what about the Gospel of Thomas, the one that I showed the picture of? That's the one that that really everybody argues about most. But what about the 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 first letter? Or, um, written by Clement of Rome, that's written in the first century, probably written about 96 to 98 AD, or the, the infancy gospel of, of James, or the Epistle of Barnabas. Uh, these are, are the, the Epistle of Barnabas is early second century, the Protevangelium of James is mid second century. Why, why not uh, include those in the New Testament? But we, we don't. Um, Part of the problem there is that those books have a different picture of Jesus. Jesus' teaching in the Gospel of Thomas is quite different from Jesus' teaching in the Gospels we have. For example, the Gospel of Thomas contains no idea that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. It doesn't even mention the death of Jesus at all. Uh, it, it, the idea of Jesus is, is that Jesus saves uh, because he brings an esoteric teaching which frees the spirit quite different idea um why don't we uh accept that and there actually are modern gnostics who have developed something which is vaguely based on things like the gospel of thomas uh, and they're saying why don't we accept that instead and of course there's the other question why do we accept everything in the new testament the some of the the uh, church fathers in the, in the fourth century were querying the uh, the authenticity of the Revelation and and two and three John. Uh, why don't we uh, follow those and reject some of the letters that we have got, some of the um, books we have got in the New Testament? 
Now, there's the, the problem that we, we, we need to be able to answer because lots of people are asking uh, this question. And the other problem that goes with it, not just what book should we have, but who has the authority to decide what books we should have in the, the New Testament? Well, the way it's usually done is that, that people go along and they look at church history and they, they look out for statements about what is Scripture and what is not Scripture. So they're looking for statements on the canon of Scripture. And then they you look for those and you say, what's the earliest time at which the canon was uh, was written down for us? And you decide that that's when the canon was, was formed. So you say, well, when was that? And then you ask the question, who made that list? So who had the authority to decide what was canon and what wasn't? Now, if you're a skeptic, you say, well, that's that's where the book becomes scripture. There were lots and lots of books around that weren't scripture. What the church has done is selected some books and decided those books are scripture. So the book becomes scripture at a time when the, the church decides it should do that. Uh, the, the, the Roman Catholic uh, picture is slightly different. Uh, it says, oh, well, we we pick the right books because we're the church and the church is the, the primary authority. So uh, it, what's important is what the church teaches. The Bible is almost irrelevant. It's only relevant in that it backs up what the church says it should say. Uh, that's where that methodology leads you to. It really leads you to one of those two conclusions, maybe both of them. Um, and that makes a challenge. The assumption that goes with it is that there are lots and lots of books around uh, and that the uh, the church selected the, the 27 books of the New Testament from those books. That's the Da Vinci Code picture. They talk about 80 Gospels. Don't know where they got the figure 80 from. No one's found anything like that many. Um, but nonetheless, 80 Gospels and the church has selected four out of them. Uh, they picked the ones that were, were most fitting to church teaching uh not only that they did it um for for political reasons as well they they, they picked things that would keep the, uh, the 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 general run of the population uh under the thumb of the church and uh quiescent so that the the, the when the emperor did something that the people would just let him get on with it they wouldn't challenge uh, the authorities uh and that's being pushed around uh, a huge uh, amount and again that leads to two challenges a roman catholic challenge and an atheist challenge roman catholic challenge being the church has authority the the atheist one being that well the new testament books are just like the apocrypha they're they're late writing they they don't know what they're talking about uh you can't trust them so let's think about the assumptions that go behind that uh view of, of canon and you've got this idea that rather than there being a, a clear set of teachings, you've got this rather amorphous group of Christians. Lots of them have different ideas from one another. There's no standard teaching. There's no um, standard authority. They're just different groups um, carrying on uh, rather an amorphous mass. And those groups write different books. Uh, the books are available second and third century because we, we've got records of them in other writings um but there they are there's just this 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 set of books all different from one another and then uh all the ones that aren't considered orthodox get get wiped out they're suppressed by the church perhaps or maybe they they simply fall into disuse and we we don't have them anymore and the remaining books they, they vanish the remaining books become that the scripture that's adopted by the church they're copied and they they're the ones that carry on into the future they're the the, the ones we've got i've just got the diagram showing the gospels there um so the question then comes well so when when are these books canonized when do they when do they are they given the stamp of scripture and uh if you get a roman catholic uh treaties on the subject then they will say oh it was the council of rome in 382 a.d now slight 
historical issues there in that there's no contemporary record of the Council of Rome. What you have is a thing called the, the uh, Galatian Decree. It's a list of um, supposed conclusions from uh, the Council of Rome, but it's written down about two centuries later on. Uh, and it purports to describe a council in Rome. It's a local council. It's not an ecumenical council. It's not a council of all the church. It's just a council of the, the uh, Western bishops uh, in the See of Rome based uh, on, on Rome. But it, it does produce a list of books of the New Testament, which is the same as the, the current list of books that we, we have nowadays. Um, so they say, there you go. That's where the church canonized the books that make the New Testament. Um, of course, you can go a bit earlier than that. Uh, the Athanasius, the, the, the chap who's mentioned in the Athanasian Creed, didn't write the creed, but it's supposed to summarize his beliefs. Um, he was the, the Metropolitan Bishop of Alexandria for quite a long time. And he wrote a letter every Easter, which was sent round all the different churches in his uh, particular see. And um, one of these ones, the, the, the Easter letter from 367 BC, includes a list of all the books in the New Testament. And again, it's the same as the, the, the list of the books in the, the current New Testament. So some people would say, oh, well, it, it's decided by Athanasius and in his letter there. Um, again, all it really means is we know that there was already an ag agreed list of, of books before Athanasius wrote that letter. Uh, it could be a long time before that. Uh, some uh, sort of populist pop critics say, well, it's the Council of Nicaea that decided it. They, they, um, they, they, they fixed church doctrine, and that includes the list of books in the New Testament. Well, they didn't discuss the, the list of books in the New Testament. We actually have, um, we haven't got minutes of the meetings, but we have the recollections of about three or four bishops who were actually at the Council of Nicaea. The, those uh, notes are still in existence. And so we know what was discussed. We know when, which day each thing was discussed. And really there were two issues. One was the uh, the nature of Jesus. And the other one was whether the, the date of Easter, whether they should follow the Jewish date, the 14th of Nisan, or whether they should use something like the current system didn't discuss the books in the new testament at all um but after the council of nicaea a few years later i think it's in 313 um the emperor constantine authorized the production of 50 bibles for use in the churches of constantinople and it is assumed again it's an assumption that um that would include a list of the books to be included so the, the idea there is that the um, Constantine's list would denote a, um, a, a canon for the New Testament. Again, it's an assumption. It could be Constantine just said, make a New Testament using the books you already know. That would probably have been just as good. Uh, it doesn't prove anything. Uh, Irenaeus of Lyon writes uh, about books which are not in the New Testament and books which are in the New Testament. He certainly makes the distinction between scripture and non-scripture. And he writes about the apocryphal, various apocryphal books and says these are not scripture and gives reasons for them not being it. And he is very insistent there are just four gospels. Uh, so th there's an idea of canon, certainly at the time of Irenaeus. Uh, the earliest list we actually have isn't made by a, a member of the Orthodox part of the church. It's made by someone who is way out on a limb, a chap called Marcion. Marcion rejected nearly all the New Testament. He accepts a few of Paul's letters. He doesn't want anything that seems too Jewish, so he picks ones uh, that are particularly um, about not keeping the law, not having to keep the law. And he only allows one gospel, which is the gospel of Luke. And even that, he has to edit out chunks of it, which uh, uh, seem to have a, a Jewish bent to them. Uh, and Marcion produces his list a little bit earlier than Irene. It's around 150. Uh, it's just in Marta, as a church father around the same kind of time. He talks about 
things being authentic scripture but again doesn't produce a list in fact doesn't name anything particularly as being scripture but at least he knows the distinction exists and you can go back even further than that the apostolic fathers um the apostolic fathers are are writers in the church they aren't apostles but they had met apostles so the apostles were being old men when the apostolic fathers were young men uh they actually did see them and they again don't make a list of books in the new testament but they do quote from the new testament quite extensively and they don't quote from uh the apocryphal works so that's the the sort of um picture that you get from from starting from this assumption of a historical look you don't really get a picture of when the canon was formed but you know there was definitely a canon by the council of rome although it's not actually passed by an ecumenical council in fact the first uh, whole church council to pass the canon was the council of trent which is in the 16th century uh, way way later than that up till then it, it's just assumed everyone knows uh, what makes scripture um now the other assumption that you get is that we don't know anything at all before the apostolic fathers that uh, the, the new testament documents the the date is sort of fudged let's say uh so that that there's no look at the exact dating of those books it, we just talk about the copy last late earliest copies we've gotten the whole idea gets pushed into the second century and uh, more conservative scholars say assume nothing's known before the 100 ad and the the radical ones will say about 180 when Irenaeus is is writing his stuff uh and it, it it's not a very helpful picture quite honestly but it's what comes from that uh particular assumption so the question you've got to ask is is that a realistic assumption is it the way things really happened or is it just completely uh away from the truth well I suggest it really is so the question that that comes in the question that the church has to answer is what books should make scripture and well the assumption that's lying behind that model is that a book becomes scripture when the church recognizes that it's scripture and that i think is a bad idea uh what would happen is if supposing that on the the uh, the 3rd of july 325 a.d the church makes its first list of scripture you're saying the gospel of john wasn't script wasn't scripture on the 2nd of july but on the 4th of july it was uh and that means that the the it isn't the book that makes it scripture the reality is um that you've got to say when was this canon recognized the reality is that that stuff is authentic from the point moment it's written it doesn't have to wait for all these different uh church councils and so on to make them inspired they're inspired already so the, the 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 question you've got there is when was it it recognized was it the council of rome was it the council of nicaea Irenaeus, did he uh decide well the reality is that a, a book is scripture because it's inspired by god it's when it's written it's written it's either scripture or it's not scripture so if it's scripture when it's written it's inspired by god then it's something that's authentic we we take account of it if it's not inspired by god it might be interesting but you can't take it as authoritative in the same way that the scripture is authoritative and this idea that the book becomes scripture because the church decides it's scripture it is not a very useful uh, idea uh, the reality is it's scripture from the moment it's written uh the question is is there any evidence to support that and i'd suggest that really there is uh what we should be looking for is not the list of all the books in the bible which you're looking for is evidence that a particular book was authoritative that it, it was um a book that was inspired by god and you get that in the new testament itself so you can see when the words of the apostles were taken as uh, the word of god so here we've got uh 
a quotation from 1 Thessalonians. We, we thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accept it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. Now, that's book is written probably in the summer of 50 AD, almost certainly in 50 AD, certainly before 49 after 49 and before the end of 51 so somewhere in that period you've got one thessalonians it's one of the, the the earliest books probably the third book to be written in the new testament and it talks about the the people in thessaloniki when they hear the apostles speaking they they recognize that what the apostles are saying is the word of god it's also evidence that in 50 AD, people are distinguishing between the word of God and words that are not the word of God. The words of Paul here are accepted as coming from God. So we've got the start of an idea of a distinction between scripture and non-scripture right at the start of the New Testament period, uh, 50 AD, when the, the only a couple of years after the first book of the New Testament was written. A bit later, uh, you get fairly well-known one from 1 Timothy chapter 5. The scripture says, you shall not muzzle the ox when it treads out the grain and the, the laborer deserves his wages. And that's, well, we can date that fairly precisely. It's it's written fairly late in 62 AD, end of September perhaps, or beginning of October, just before the letter to Titus is written. And uh, you've got this quotation in it, the laborer deserves his wages. Where does it come from? Well, it comes from Luke. There, there are two accounts of that saying, one in Luke, one in Matthew. This is a quotation of the Luke one because they use different words for the word for wages. Uh, they presumably are translating Jesus's words from Aramaic into Greek. And uh, the quotation is Luke 10 verse 7, which is pretty well exactly the same as the, the quotation that you get there in Timothy. And it's described as scripture. So the Gospel of Luke is decided to be scripture in by the end of 62 AD. Well, the Gospel of Luke uh, was probably written somewhere between 57 and 61 AD. So it's, it's only a year or so after it's written, it's already recognized as scripture and we know it's scripture from the start and there's another one this is in two peter as our brother brother paul so wrote to you according to the wisdom given him as he does in all his letters when he speaks of these matters there are some things in them that are hard to understand which are the ignorant and unstable twist their own destruction as they do the other scriptures and that one's written probably very late on in 60 whoa i've got that um yeah probably written on late on in 64 ad just possible that uh it, peter that the the, the uh, peter is writing just before the the Nero neronian persecution starts just possible that that didn't really get going until uh 65 ad till the the, the spring started in which case it might have been written in 65 ad but second half of 64 is much more likely and uh, we've got it talks about the the letters of Paul. Letters of Paul are all written by uh, this stage. The letters we've got, and uh, Paul is probably going about to die. And uh, they describe as scripture. People are misunderstanding those, maybe deliberately so, in the same way that they do the other scriptures. So. There's a distinction between things that are scripture and things that are not scripture, and the letters of Paul are described as scripture. So we've got evidence there that the, the canon of scripture is decided uh, from the start. There's always a distinction from the moment the books were written between scripture and books that are not scripture. So how does the church know? what scripture how do they know that, that this letter is going to be scripture that letter isn't and the answer to that question is apostles we have apostles and the apostles uh, know what is scripture they're the one people who proclaim the gospel if somebody was not proclaiming it correctly or wasn't inspired in their proclamation the apostles would know 
what was going on and they'd say something about it they'd do something you get it in in letters and so on uh, so if the apostles recognize a book as scripture then that would be scripture uh, they're inspired by god to write scripture themselves they have the gift of discerning spirits they can see what is scripture what is not scripture uh, so a book that's approved by the apostle would count as scripture a book that was rejected by the apostles or was, was not said to be scripture wouldn't be scripture and the the word is approved it doesn't have to be written by an apostle but the apostles are around they can say what is scripture and what is not scripture uh, so the date is very important when you're looking at a book if it's books written after the apostles had died the apostles couldn't approve it and so you don't treat it as scripture that's one of the important things about it another one is was it already accepted as scripture now the the picture you get from the critics if you go into uh, the question go on the internet and read about it you find a, a sort of dating pattern that looks like this so that the people are saying well we've got these these apocryphal books that are possible alternative scriptures oh, exactly. and they date them very early so the, the gospel of thomas gets dated by some people as early as 50 a.d notice that's actually earlier than the earliest date the critics give to uh, the gospel of mark the reality is it mark is probably more like 50 a.d than the gospel of thomas but nonetheless that's the kind of dating picture that that you get and they say there you go they're about the same time uh you can accept uh the the the, the apocryphal works on exactly the same basis as the new testament ones notice how late they do go you know the the letters that are attributed to paul some of them they they put right up in the end of the uh or the mid the end of the first part of the, the second century to peter that some people are claiming that it's written as late as 160 uh, a.d and the problem is that that dating is completely faulty uh there's an uh, a video up on the gospel online channel which deals with the dating of the the new testament books and why we put them when when we do uh, i'll put a link in the description to this uh to show that particular video so you can follow it if you want to but uh that dating is is a faulty one the real one is something more like this so the the new testament ones come in first ones are being written i think 48 for for the first of paul's letters mark could have been written between about 50 and 55 act must be written in 62 a.d fairly early on and so on uh, john's gospels written certainly before 70 a.d um and uh, and and so one can can go whereas the uh, ones that got, got the apocryphal ones that are being considered uh, are much later than that uh, so the nice thing is that the new testament's written while there are, are apostles around the apostles have approved them uh, we don't know when exactly the apostolic period ends uh, some of them people like peter and paul would die in the persecution of nero uh, James, the the brother of John, dies in the, the sort of around 41, 42 AD, killed by Herod Agrippa. But John the Apostle himself is said by later church historians to have lived on the reign of Trajan. Trajan came to the, the throne in 98 AD. So there could be some quite late apostles. Whatever the, the truth of the matter is exactly... Uh, we do know that the current New Testament, the ones we have in our New Testament now, were written in the time of the apostles. We then got this this series of um, the yellow ones on the, on the diagram, the church fathers, sorry, the, early, the the apostolic fathers. Now, those sort of overlap the apostles a bit, but we've got the advantage that they don't claim to be scripture. So if they don't claim to be scripture, then we don't have to accept them as scripture. Uh, and then after that, you get things like the Protoevangelium of James, which I suspect was never intended to be taken seriously. It's a romance on the childhood of Jesus. And the uh, the apocryphal gospels are much later altogether. So we've got um, 
one other point, which is that already the apostolic fathers are referring to the New Testament books as being authoritative. And people like Polycarp quote them all. You know, they really are quoting them hand over fist. It's, it's a tremendous number of quotations. Ignatius of Antioch also quotes a lot from the, the, the New Testament that we have. So the authority for the the um, the books of the New Testament goes right back to the time of the apostles. It's not something which is developed later on. So the real history canon is something like this. You've got the New Testament, which is written uh, a bit after the middle of the, the first century, but only uh, 20 to 40 years after the, the uh, resurrection. And the apostles can verify which of those are scripture and which are not. We've got the apostolic fathers that come up. Marcion makes his list. He doesn't make his list to include books. Say so these are the books we include. What he makes his list for is to eliminate some of the books that are already considered scriptures. You're making a list. He says, I'm not going to accept these parts of the New Testament. That's what his list is for. And shortly after Marcion, people start writing uh, additional apocryphal uh, gospels, particularly, but occasionally letters, and there are some acts and some apocalypses. Um, Irenaeus starts to argue about this, the reason being these are now a new phenomenon. They're things that, that are starting to bother uh, the church uh, around 180 when Irenaeus is writing his um his works and the then builds up a, a controversy over the canon there's no controversy earlier because the, the only canon you've got is the new testament later on people are saying things are, are are canonical and so you get a controversy and that's coming to an end by the time athanasius writes his letter everyone has uh, finally come to the conclusion that the original canon is is the real thing and the other stuff uh, is is just invented later so the time of the council of rome the the argument is really over um but it's a an argument that was unnecessary it was only there because people write late apocryphal works so conclusions what can we draw from that well the first thing is that it's not the 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 list of books that's important it's not the canon that's important it's whether that book is authoritative that's important and the canon should be the list of authoritative books and that authority is determined when the book is written it doesn't depend on the church recognizing it later on in fact if the church gets it wrong and has a list that isn't all the inspired books or includes some that aren't that's a problem for the church it means the church has gone wrong uh the the reality is that the scripture is determined independently of the church and good on the church has spotted the books that really are inspired but it's really a question of church administration rather than what scripture what scripture's already decided and the what was authoritative is known from the time of the apostles it's not really discussed very much because everyone knew what the the canon was it's only later on when people start to write apocryphal books so then we get a controversy because people are saying oh and this is this extra book it no one's seen it before now because it's a it's a hidden book but now we're, we're making it known to everybody and that starts to create a controversy which is settled later on but that's a matter of church history it's whether the church gets it right or gets it wrong and the yeah. canon lists that we have that people search around are really just made to settle this controversy they're not intended to to be uh, the point at which that book became inspired it was already inspired when it was written so let's uh, give up there